All right, let me go to uh, Paul. Thanks for your patience. Hey there, uh, a friend of mine referred me to you. She, mm -hmm. uh, I have a little bit of IRS debt and a few things in collections, and she said you'd be able to, you know, take care of that or arrange it so I don't have to pay anything. Okay, sometimes uh, IRS debt, if it's low, I recommend either paying it off or working out a payment plan if it's not a hardship. Sometimes I can get the IRS uh, to agree that it's a hardship. I just have to fill out forms. Uh, if I have to do that where I can't protect your property otherwise, I like to make the IRS conclude that you're in a hardship, which means they won't try to collect. You don't have to pay them. Um, if it's a large amount, and you're filing, you can run the clock on them, as I say. So the way that works is you just keep on filing. You owe them for that year, but you stay current and file for the following years. And then after 10 years, the older debt falls off. But in order to make that work, I have to make it you, I have to make you uncollectible or get the IRS to say you're in a hardship. So mm -hmm. either way. So uh, when I interact with you in the beginning, I try to figure out what, what path I can take for you, the easiest way to go. So that's, that's how I deal with IRS. And as far as unsecured debt collections um the best way on that is i mean if it's like citibank and those guys I capital just, one I, yeah yeah those guys so i just i recommend i don't even look at your credit doesn't even matter about your credit i don't make decisions based on credit this is not recommended what i do is base it, my decision on what i'm going to do on your ability to get access to your cash without them touching it so i say don't pay them make yourself uncollectible that takes a little paperwork and then uh, if you wanted to pay him, you could. I recommend against that unless you borrowed money from a family member or pay that person back. But what will happen is sometimes the bank will sue you and get a judgment lien. This saves you a lot of time. Don't deal with them. It doesn't matter if there's a claim, like they send you a letter saying pay, or then they sue you and get a judgment lien. And then they say now pay. It's the same thing for them, right? The question mm -hmm. is, if they get a judgment lien, will they be able to take anything? So by the time they get a judgment lien, my clients are uncollectible. They're uncollectible. Okay. None of my clients have ever paid creditors once we get to that point. Now, on the credit, we can fix that. Okay. It's the whole thing's a scam. And it's not like, you know, there's no fancy formula. Once I show you, once I tell you in five minutes, you'll be shocked how easy it is. And, but then I caution people don't rely on your credit so much. Learn how to do things without good credit. And you can do things. And yeah, it is a more difficult, but it's a good practice. So, anyways, it's a whole, a series of things to learn there, in my opinion, is is good recommended. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'm already kind of moving towards uh, getting away from credit and just being, you know, cash only. Um, as for the IRS thing, it's like thirty thousand. I know I can submit like a bargain or offer and compromise for maybe like six or seven. I just don't know if it's worth it for that, or if I should be able to get the whole thing discharged completely. Primarily, I owe this debt because uh, I was self-employed and the business kind of imploded. And, you know, sure. Yeah, they don't care why. But but what they will do, there's two ways to do an offer and compromise. I like to do an offer and compromise. Uh, you can get the offer documents. It's basically a balance sheet you're giving them. And I like to do it based on doubt as to collectability. Right. So by the time we submit that to the IRS, I've already stripped your assets. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it's uncollectible. And we're going to say doubt as to your ability to collect. We don't oh. like, I don't like to normally say doubt as to liability because that takes us down a different path. It's much easier to just say, okay, okay, I owe it, but you can't get it. Sorry, I'm poor. You know, I don't care if you're rich. They're going to okay. agree when I'm done with you. Most of my clients look like they're homeless if you look at their personal income statement. Okay. When they're, they come to me in a bad situation and I make it look worse, but they're way better off when I'm done with them. So that's the idea on that one. 30,000 is worth working with because look at it like this. It's not about, I don't want to pay. It's about a better use of capital. So mm -hmm. would it be useful to pay the IRS because you can sleep better at night with $30,000? Or can I take the $30,000 that I could have paid them over a year, let's say, and I and I go find myself an asset to buy something you know that's going to pay me, right? So let's say I spend a year and make the IRS scream and scream for that money send me letters and all stuff. And so then I go and buy something for, I take my 30 grand, I take 10 grand out of that and I go buy something that's paying me three grand a month. Okay, those are pretty easy numbers. And so now I got an asset that's paying me three grand a month. What the heck is that? I don't know. Maybe I bought part of my cousin's lawn maintenance business. I don't know. So I have an asset now, a contract that's paying me three grand a month and I still got my 20 grand and maybe I like the IRS. Maybe I'm going to take my three grand a month and pay the IRS. They'll love that. Okay. They don't need to see where the money's coming from. We keep it out of your estate or don't pay them, pay your mortgage, right? Mm -hmm. Increase your net worth. You never want to take 
cash and pay to a liability that doesn't help you going forward. That's my opinion. That okay. you want your net worth to go up when you have a debt situation. We always try to make it look like that. All right, cool. Thank you. All right, sure.